Hi and welcome back to my channel, hope you're all doing well today and today I'm going to go through wedding websites, the reasons I think you should have one, what you've got to cover on them and everything that they can do to help you with your wedding planning process. If we haven't met before, my name is Laura Beth and I am a professional wedding planner here in the UK and this is my little wedding world where I get to chat to you each week and offer hints, tips and secrets to ensure that your wedding journey is stress free and enjoyable. So let's get on with all the talk about wedding websites. So I'm going to start with the fact that I think wedding websites are amazing to set up to help the whole process and make everything that little bit easier. Gone are the days where we have to send out loads of messages and paper invites and bits of paper to update details. You can have all this information in one place for a much lower cost and it's so much easier to access and update. Everyone has access to the same information, you don't have to rely on a family member to pass it on to someone else to someone else and everything get changed. You've got total control, you can update the information and ensure everyone has access to exactly the same details and there's nothing that gets lost in translation. Websites are super easy, quick and cheap to set up and you've got a couple of options with how you want to do it. Starting with the most basic and the most cost effective one and this will be going to a wedding website company and there are loads of them out there to choose from. You can do free ones and they'll have a few things that you've got to fill in and they're fairly template based or you can do one which you pay a small fee for, you'll get your own personalised um, web address to send out to your guests and you can access a few more of the features. I'd say it's well worth paying for the little upgrade, it's not too much of a cost usually and you'll get so much more benefit with it. This is the sort of format that I normally recommend, a wedding website, go on there, you can choose from loads of different designs and it's really easy to use, even someone who's a basic and a novice like I was when I started setting them up can access these and do it really quick. Other options you've got are more traditional website building companies, this can be things like Wix and Squarespace, they're a little bit more complicated, they don't tend to come with so many wedding related features, you've kind of got to work out how to do them but they are fairly cost effective and you can put more of your own individual style on them. The next step up would then be designing things like WordPress um, and building a website from scratch. Now I am never going to commit to doing this because I don't understand doing all that coding and everything behind it um, and unless you know how to do it yourself you would have to have a designer on board. If you've got the budget to do it great you can get a designer on board give them everything you want and they can completely tailor it to your theme, your style and be completely bespoke. But for most people I would imagine that you're going to be going down the website template style um, and that will be going through a wedding website company. Although everyone's website is going to be different there's kind of a set list of things that I would expect to find on most websites and things that would be useful for you and your guests. And this starts with number one, the most basic information you need on there. You need your names, you need the date of the wedding and you need the location of the wedding. So I think all that's pretty self-explanatory. You and your partner's name, what time your wedding ceremony is and maybe a few details about things happening on the day and where the wedding's likely to happen and if the ceremony is at a different location add that in there as well. Often you can put addresses in, they'll bring up maps of it, people can then add that to Google Maps and they can find out how long it'll take to get to places and find all the details they need to know. But that in your basic is the the number one bit of information you need on your website. Number two is adding a bit more personal detail to it and this can include a nice little message to your guests as they land on your page. You can password protect these websites usually so no one else can access them unless you give the password so don't worry about anyone finding anything out about your wedding that you didn't want them to. So you can add a little love story on there, how you met, things that you've done together, you can add a little gallery of maybe travels and holidays you've been on. You can also extend this to include your wedding party so you can give a little bit of spiel on all your family members, your maid of honour, your bride, um, your groomsman and best man, things like that. It just brings the wedding to life so when people attend your wedding they know a little bit about each of you and they feel more included in the wedding day. Number three on the list is breaking down all the events on the day. Now I touched on this a bit with point one but what you'll need to do is list out all the different things that are happening on the wedding day, where they are, what time will be happening and how people get between the two in terms of um, directions. It can be really nice to add some maps in here, you may wish to add directions of your own if the place is particularly difficult to find or maybe the Google Maps that comes up doesn't actually pinpoint the right location so you'll need to check that out and make sure that you're not sending your guests um, on a completely different direction. Um, it's happened with me with wedding venues in the past, postcodes especially in rural locations don't tend to take you to the exact place and people can end up getting stuck in fields and 
ends of places and down little narrow lanes. So make sure when you look at this that everyone's got the right directions and you're not going to be on the phone trying to find out where everyone is when you're trying to get married. It can also be really nice to add some pictures of the locations, people know what to look out for when they're driving off. It builds a little bit of excitement for the day, people get to see where you've chosen and really look forward to spending time there on your wedding day. Number four, now this won't apply to everyone but it's getting really popular to turn the whole wedding day into more of a wedding weekend. Now this may not be at the same location, you may only have booked your wedding for the one day or you could have the wedding happening at an exclusive event, um, an exclusive venue even, where the all the guests would be attending the night before and the morning after. So whether that's at one location or different locations, you may wish to add some kind of dinner or pre-drinks the night before and where that's happening and what time it's happening. And then maybe a brunch the next day to catch up with everyone and say goodbye before they um, head on home. Again, you can add pictures of the locations, you can add directions there um, and all the details that they'll need to know to make sure that they find their way to this place. Next on the list, number five, would be some helpful information to help your guests know what to expect on the wedding day. And this comes everything from dress code, so letting them know whether maybe it's black tie, it's cocktail, it's a more casual affair. You could let them know that it's summer dresses and chinos or that it's black tie and ball gown. Um, it's a really good thing to know if you've got a specific theme in, my, theme in mind even. Even if you haven't, it's good to let people know what they're expected to wear. We all know as a wedding guest that it can be awkward to work out what you want to do. You don't want to end up matching the bridesmaids or anything like that. So letting guests know what the theme and overall style is will really help them um, in determining what they're going to wear on the day. Include details for transport for the guests um, and this would ha include if you are providing any transport for the guests on the wedding day, so whether you will be offering a bus service to pick them up or there is a shuttle service at the end of the night to take them home. If there isn't anything offered, you don't necessarily need to include this, people presume that they've got to sort themselves out. And leading on from this, if you're not offering transport, people will need to know about parking restrictions and where they're to park. Specifically if you're getting married more in a city location or maybe your ceremony venue doesn't have that much parking, letting people know where in the village they may need to park, letting them know if there's any cost to parking, um, where the best places to go are and if it's a little bit far from the venue and they may need to walk to, to bring flat shoes, umbrellas, things like that as well. It's always good to know, people can prepare. Also check with parking overnight if guests would like to leave their cars, whether they can leave them there and come back the next day or there's any charges to this or restrictions from the venue. Adding all this information just means that you've got less questions you're going to have to answer throughout and everyone has the same information so it's really good to add it all on there. Number six on the list, um, a new thing that we now have to add to weddings is details on social media. Um, some people, totally cool, you do not mind whether they post things straight after the ceremony, post pictures when they're getting there, anything like that. Some couples prefer that photos were a little bit more limited. It's really popular nowadays to make an announcement before the ceremony that says no pictures during the ceremony. This has come because there was a bit of a wave of people taking photos at ceremonies and the photographer trying to get their shots and there was just too many phones in the way and people videoing the bridal entrance or the vows or things like that. So a lot of people choose nowadays not to have phones during the wedding ceremony but are quite happy to have them for the rest of the day. Some people may decide that they don't want anything posted on social media until they do and they may get to make the first announcement. Some people prefer that you don't post anything to the evening. So if evening guests are coming, they're not going to see any of the details until they arrive, so they still get to have that wow factor. So whatever you decide to do, this can be a really good place to kind of make it known um, so guests know what to expect on the wedding day. And equally, if you're looking at having a wedding hashtag, which is super popular for collecting all those pictures on Instagram, or maybe that you've got a um, website sharing sort of program that you want to use and that you want everyone to send the pictures to after the wedding, everyone can download download that before the wedding and it's easy to upload them to during the wedding day so everyone gets to see everyone else's images. Number seven on the list, this will be the most important reason that you set up a wedding uh, website and this will be to collate your RSVPs. It's usually really easy to input everyone's names and all your guests into the back end of the um, website. You'll have like a dashboard that you can then monitor and see as people reply. All they've got to do then when they have their invite, log into the website, write their name and then you can add a series of questions you'll want them to answer. This can include everything from who's coming with them, what choices they want for their meal if you've got a choice menu, if there's any dietary requirements, if they've got any song requests, you can get them to fill in some guest book details as well. And this can also be really useful because you can limit the number of guests that they can reply for or only say that they can only reply for each guest at once. This means that if there's any unexpected 
vaccinated plus ones that you haven't invited or maybe children that they've presumed are invited, they won't actually be able to RSVP for them and this could send a subtle note that they're not invited rather than you having that awkward conversation. I can't promise you it will stop it but it is another way of trying to avoid that um, that kind of moment where you don't really know what to say to people. Number eight on the list is gift registry. Now this is quite a tradition that people would buy items for the couple that they would request. Nowadays a lot of couples live together and they don't want to be given lots of different items but if you do want to do gift registry then these wedding websites make it really easy for you to add say Amazon um, wish lists and stuff like that up onto your um, website and then guests can just click on that and purchase for you. Equally if you don't want gifts and you'd rather have more of a monetary um, gift given to you then you can put that on there and put a nice little message about what you plan to do with the money and the most popular one that's coming through is honeymoon funds so you can add up on the website little activities you want to do on your honeymoon and people can actually purchase or donate towards these activities for you. It takes a little bit of the cost away then when you're trying to plan a big holiday after the wedding and it's really nice that people can see what sort of activities they've donated for you and what you got up to on your honeymoon then. Everyone gets to feel a little bit part of it. So I hope you enjoyed that video. It was a little quick short one for me from me even, I can't talk today, um, for a change. Um, but I hope that's given you a good idea of what to do with your wedding website, what information to load up on there, and how it can make your life so much easier, and that it doesn't actually cost the earth to set one up. I do this regularly, I am not a tech genius in any way, and if I can do it, I'm sure you can as well. So I hope you enjoy exploring. There are so many lovely websites to go through, um, and so many lovely templates to pick. So if you've done a wedding website, or you're looking for some further information, pop a comment below, and I'd happily give some responses to that and hopefully some other people will be able to share what websites they've used and how they found them. If you've liked this video please hit the thumbs up button and also please hit subscribe. This means that you'll get notified of all my videos in the future and you'll be able to get there nice and quickly to view them. As always it's been lovely chatting to you, hope you found this useful and I will speak to you all again very very soon. <laughs> Bye!